Okay, so now that we've got SAS and CSS set up, let's install PostCSS along with some uh, helpful and really cool plugins I think you'll enjoy. So first things first is, since we're introducing uh, something new to Webpack, uh, we need to install a new loader. So let's install the PostCSS loader. We can use this command right here. Let's go to our terminal, npm install dash d postcss loader. Uh, if you've never seen the hyphen capital D, that's the same as doing the dash dash save dash dev. It's just a little shortcut. Cool. Uh, another thing we're going to install is actually before we get to that, let's set up our postcss config. Um, so we need to create a file called postcssconfig.js. So I'll just do it from here. Postcss. I'll just touch the file here, and then while I'm in here, I'm going to install um, some additional uh, postcss plugins. So CSS Nano, Auto Prefixer, and Rucksack CSS. Um, just type in this command as you see it, and then I'll go over and explain what each of these plugins actually does. Uh, so PostCSS is going to automatically add vendor prefixes, um, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. Um, so it'll add things like Moz for Mozilla Firefox, MS prefixes, WebKit, things like that. There's even this little auto prefixer.github.io. This is like a little playground where you can type in your quote unquote normal CSS and then it'll show you um, what CSS um, auto prefixer will output. So see, you can see here, it does WebKit user select, Moz user, MS user. It adds in all those vendor prefixes for us automatically so we never have to worry about it again. Uh, CSS Nano is a minifier and it compresses our CSS so it's much faster to read and parse speeds up load times and then rucksack this is one of my personal favorites if you go to rucksackcss.org and you come to the docs section this just has a bunch of helpful like little utilities that you can use and one of my personal favorites is this uh, responsive typography so if you give a class with a font size of responsive it's going to automatically adjust the font size width uh, depending upon screen size and the way it does that is once it's done uh, PostCSS is running the plugin it outputs this kind of complicated CSL calc function which I'll demonstrate once we get everything set up and running. Uh, the final thing we're going to do is we're going to install this mini CSS extract plugin and what you can see down here on the left hand side in the docs under mini CSS extract plugin what this does is this is going to extract all of our CSS out of our bundle.js into its own CSS file. Uh, so let's run this command and get this set up. Cool. So now that we've got everything installed, we can get everything uh, up and running again. So we need to uh, update our Webpack config. So first thing we need to do is we need to um, include that mini CSS plugin that we just installed mini CSS extract plugin. Cool. And then we're going to update our loaders a little bit. So if you come down here to our SCSS section in the use array, add in an object, and we're going to add loader mini css extract text plugin dot loader and then options this is for hot module reloading I'll explain what this does after I'm done typing it loading and v oops okay so this is telling Webpack, anytime you come across this .scss file, you're going to run it through this mini CSS extract plugin loader. And then if we are in development mode, which is based upon our node environment variable, uh, enable hot module reloading. Another thing we need to do is we no longer need style loader because that has to do with injecting the CSS into the DOM. And this kind of takes care of that. So we can get rid of this. 
and then we can add in our post CSS loader. So the ordering of this is super important. So make sure it's CSS loader, post CSS loader, then your SAS loader. And then finally at the very bottom down here, we need to include our uh, mini CSS plugin. Yep. Pass in an object, file name. I'll explain this after I'm done typing it real quick. Okay, so see how this says file name bundle.js? So our JavaScript bundle, that webpack, webpack outputs, is just going to be bundle.js. We're passing it a file name, so the mini CSS extract plugin is what, what file name do you want the CSS file to be once it's done writing it to its own file. Uh, we could just hard code this and give it like main.css. Um, or in Webpack, you can also put in these little brackets with name. And this is like a little placeholder. So whatever our uh, CSS file is called, in this case it's main.css, or scss, I'm sorry. It'll be output as main.css. <clears throat> so we could do the same thing down here. We could do name.js, and then it would output as index.js. Uh, so now that we've got that set up, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we need to uh, modify and update our post CSS config. And so this is a configuration file specifically for post CSS. And this is how we tell it to uh, which plugins we want post CSS to use. Because out of the box, post CSS doesn't do anything. You have to tell it which plugins you want it to run on your code. So we're going to use auto prefixer. And I'm just going to duplicate these a couple times. Uh, CSS nano and this one is actually a string which is rucksack so if you'll notice um, I'm passing in these or I'm giving it empty objects this is if you look up each plugin you can pass in additional configuration and options specifically for the auto prefixer plugin the CSS nano or the rucksack plugin uh, but I don't really need any of those. The defaults are just fine, so I'm going to leave that as is. One thing that Auto Prefixer, however, does need is something called a browsers list. So if you do browsers list RC, so you need this dot file, dot browsers, plural, list RC. And essentially what this does is this tells Auto Prefixer um, which browsers to target. So this is a pretty useful one that I found is pretty common and it handles the majority of use cases in my opinion um, <clears throat> what this saying is target any browsers that are within the last two years greater than 1% in use and they're not dead um, I will configure this and change this to a different setting to kind of show you some different options that you get once I start building and outputting stuff uh, the last thing I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna come back here and I'm going to copy all of this code so that you can see the output once we actually run it. So I'm going to get rid of this. We don't need the variables. We know that that's working. So here's just some CSS. And then I also want to include that rucksack property. So I do font size responsive. That should give us the kind of crazy CSS calc function I was talking about. Uh, so that should be everything. Let's give this a rip see what happens uh, this is just an alias by the way in my shell NR dev stands for uh, NPM run dev and that's actually not what I want to do sorry I want to run NR build so the NR again is just an alias for NPM run it's just a shortcut oh, and we get an error let's see what the error no module Module build failed, post CSS plugin failed, cannot find module CSS nano. Uh, I probably made a typo. Yep. Too many ends. Let's try it again. Great. So let's take a look and see what it did. 
If we go on our disk file, now we've got a main.css, and here's our CSS. Now, this isn't super easy to read because, again, we've got uh, CSS Nano running, which is going to compress everything. So just for the sake of demonstration, I am going to delete this and then run this again so that it doesn't compress the CSS. Cool, open this back up, and here's our CSS. So as you can see, Auto Prefixer is working. It's adding in our WebKit, Moz, MS User, um, vendor prefixes. And also, you can see here, our font size is responsive here, but then Rucksack runs, and then it converts it into this kind of weird uh, calc function, which is how it's handling all the responsiveness, and then it even adds these media queries for setting up the body font size. So one last quick thing before uh, we're all set. I'd wanted to show you how this browser list will update and change what gets output by the auto prefixer. So here's my settings right now. If I go back to this playground here, you can see that the browser list just says last version, last four version. And if I go back to here and I paste that in, now when I run this, you'll see that the CSS output is entirely different. The reason why is because before we, we were targeting just the last two years and only certain browsers. This one is much more broad and it's targeting the last four versions of all the major browsers. So now if you look, we've got transition, the display grid, we've got additional vendor prefixes, and then also for the background where we're using gradients, we've got O linear gradient, WebKit gradient. So I just want to quickly show you that that depending upon what you put in the browser list here, it's going to determine which um, vendor prefixes get output here. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video, guys. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up specific configs or webpack configs, that is, for development and production environments.